Hello, listeners, and welcome to Elisha's Eerie History. Yay! Elisha's Eerie History. Today, I have special guest and friend of the pod, Miss Brooke Bossiger. Hello, everybody. (laughs) Thank you for coming, Brooke. To set the scene a little bit, she's in a beautiful purple shirt. It's got some red flowers on it. Roses, baby. Roses. My favorite flower. Gorgeous. So good. Um, There's also a rose cat tree. Tulip, maybe. Some type of floral behind us. We'll call it a rose for now because, again, favorite floral. Roses on the tablecloth? Thank you. I didn't even, like... It all connects. Rose on the skull? It all connects. It's all connecting. (laughs) If you're not watching and only listening, we have some beautiful pumpkins on the table. There's a tapestry behind us of, like, the woods. It's giving very maximalism and... It's spooky vibes. Spooky. And the best decor I think we've had on the pod. There's so five far. pumpkins. Each of these were stolen. All of them. From where? Um, so this one was outside of a restaurant. <gasps> this one was inside a restaurant. These were at Texas Roadhouse. Cute. This one was from a friend's house. This one also was from a friend's house. Okay. Are you like a cereal? Yes. I've stolen from restaurants. I steal pumpkins. I've stolen a plate from a restaurant I worked at because like I brought like cupcakes home on it or something. Oh, that was an accident. It was an accident. (laughs) And then I've definitely taken like the ketchup containers. Yeah, no, these pumpkins were stolen deliberately. I steal pumpkins and it only happens when I drink. Fun fact. But a spooky fact, indeed. So Interesting. Yeah. Just wanted to let everybody know, because I take much pride. And for those that are watching or listening, um, if you think that a pumpkin was stolen from your place, it it wasn't me. (laughs) Uh, She is innocent of... Innocent till proven guilty? Yeah. You can't claim that this is your pumpkin. You don't know. You don't remember. It's fine. They don't know. They don't know. And speaking of innocent until proven guilty, this is a great transition into our topic today. Today we're going to be talking about Grace Shearwood. Have you heard of Grace Shearwood, Brooke? I've lived on Sherbrooke, but I've never heard of Grace Shearwood. Okay, so Grace Shearwood is the uh, last convicted person of witchcraft in Virginia. What year? She was convicted of witchcraft in 1698. That was the last one? Mm -hmm. Oh my god, I thought it would have been like the 1800s or something, because everybody wants to peg a woman as a witch. Everybody. True. So. True. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, her house was knocked down in the early 2000s. It was Mm -hmm. uh, apparently had lasted that long, but apparently it wasn't in good repair, so they knocked it down. There is a plantation, the Ferris Plantation, which is where her trials were held. Supposedly, her spirit is at the Ferris Plantation. Are there sights of her? Noises? People or? claim there have been sightings. People also claim she was buried somewhere on that plantation, or they claim she was buried on her own property. Mm -hmm. Either way, she does not have a marked burial. So they say in the plantation over a specific tree, you can see her ghost at certain times. What did she look like? Is there like an image that I can see? I just want to see, you know, I have a version and vision in my head. I just want to see how hot this bitch actually is. Well, I do want to say there's no pictures or paintings of when she was alive that are still in existence the statue because she was like a witch so any record but of- a lot of witches are like drawn by somebody especially if she was in court that yeah. many times they still had like people drawing like, yeah. people in court at 
even at that time, I think. And if not, don't quote me. There's no proof of what she looked like, but there is some art and speculation. So this is the like. statue, eh? Yes. So to give the viewers that are only listening, the statue is... Is that a raccoon? It's a raccoon, okay. yeah. So there's a raccoon standing on two raccoon? legs next to her. I think it's because she... It, I don't really know because none of the <laughs> none of the history has a lot to do with the raccoon. And when you read the description of it, the raccoon is just kind of like there part of the lore. I oh, guess. she's like Snow White. You know? Yeah, she, she can sing and little animals yeah. come up to her because she's a witch and Snow White's a witch. I guess. Yeah, she's got like <laughs> rosemary in her thing. She's holding a sack and it looks like it's full of herbs, yes. which follows you know what she was all about. People in this photo have put between her hands actual living, beautiful flowers, which is lovely. I was going to say, people have a, apparently adorn it with money and flowers and give her a lot of respect. Her hair, though, in this... Oh, okay. It looks longer in the back. See, right in this photo, it honestly is giving um, Eleanor Roosevelt. It's like done up. Eleanor Roosevelt, for sure. Like the face and the hair. Yeah. It's really giving that. I feel like it's so funny how we have objectified women as witches to think that they have the long, scraggly hair and long, yeah. scraggly nails yeah. and sunken in eyes yeah. and, you know, well, old and gross. And she looks very elegant. She yeah. looks very elegant. She's very elegant. Let's get into the Google reviews. 4.7 out of 5 stars. Hot. Hot. And 83 reviews in total. Mm. Preston Burns. He says, located in North Witch Duck Road in front of the Centara Hospital, I find this beautiful historical sculpture using the Atlas Obscura app. Otherwise, I would have driven right pa- past it. It isn't easy to see from the road at all. There is a statue of the last woman convicted of witchcraft in Prince Anne County and Virginia's only person convicted with a trial by water. She was tried and convicted and then imprisoned nearby. I'm pleased that this history of past injustice was not forgotten, and I believe that past wrongs need to be acknowledged instead of whitewashed or hidden. Ooh, worth amen. A, this guy, like, kind of summarized a lot. He did. No, he, he did a good job. Um, I'm excited to hear more about the trial by water. Yes. That sounded interesting. Yes. She's the, as he said it, She's the only person to be trialed by water in Virginia. Oh, so that is so sexy. Yeah. Um, I love water and so do you. Cancer, Pisces, it's, water signs. It's together. It's you're gonna. <laughs> we're gonna get into it, but you're gonna love her. You're gonna love her Grace for a different reason. Grace, okay. Grace sounds like my past life. Maybe trial yes, by water. Give it. Yes. Yeah, give it to me. Let's go. Let's do it. This is a great review, too. Okay, this person is called Our Strange Reality. She gave it five stars, and she said, Grace Sherwood deserves no less than to become a bronze idol overlooking the land where her futile witch trial transpired. Futile. Witch trial. Love it. Transpired. That's so good. (laughs) A woman ahead of her time, Grace was the charmed survival of the local shrewish colonial women and their jealousy-inspired claims of witchcraft. May her spirit blissfully enjoy the afterlife as a local legend loved by many. Ooh, she had a hard one for Sherwood. This guy's name is Anhi Palai? Sorry, Anhi. Or Anji. Palai. Oh, sorry if we mispronounce you during this. Go on. <laughs> um, 11 reviews, no photos. Mm, and mysterious. Pictures of a cat as the profile picture. Oh, wow. That's amazing. And it says, I have loved this statue ever since I learned the story of the Witch of Pungo. A nurse, mother, and animal lover. I wish I could give her a big hug. Thank you to Tim Kane. For posthumous pardon, and thank you, Centara, for honoring her with this slide. I'll carry your basket for you now, Grace Sherwood. I'm excited. Yeah. I need to hear more about yes. all of this Grace Sherwood. There's not a lot of lasting history. As I said, this was in the 1600s, so not a lot of primary sources still exist, unfortunately. Mm. Because of that, a lot of this is verbal legend, but we do have records of 
some of her convictions. Uh, these can be viewed in the Political Arena newspaper in 1833, the Virginia Free Press in 1833, and uh, the WHRO Public Radio. They have a segment on this in 2021. Do you say WHRO? Uh, okay. Oh, uh, uh, that's what I. That's what I read. Bro. I read horror. I read horror. Not horror. Excuse me. And then, <laughs> um, the old donation Episcopal Church also had some stuff I pulled for this. But I will say none of these are primary sources, so to speak. The closest are the first two newspapers. So as most history things go, when you're a bad person in the eyes of history, they yeah. don't preserve a lot of history from you. They so get rid of it. They just erase it. All history is who who saw who, it. And who said it. Right. Who, all of it. Whose side of the story wins, Absolutely. essentially. Get philosophical yeah. for a second. Yeah, we always, all of we, always, we always get this way. Yeah, sorry. I mean, I just think about the deeper meaning. You guys should, too, if you're listening and watching. <laughs> so tell me, what is Grace Sherwood all about? Yes. So, Grace Sherwood... Let me flip my paper. Perfect. Grace Sherwood was born in 1660 and she was born in an area called Pungo. Pungo is now what we consider Southeast Virginia. So the East Coast of Virginia towards the South. Okay. She grew up in a middle class family and they owned over a hundred acres of farmland and she was educated. And because of that, since not a lot of people were educated in this time. Especially women. Especially women. She was a controversial character. Oh. So. Where would you say Punga would be located in Virginia now? So. Roughly, I guess. I would say it's maybe like south of Williamsburg, but specifically it's like really on the coast. Like I think they Ooh. lived like basically on the beach, kind of. Ooh. Really far over there. She overlooks like the beach area now. Oh, excellent. Hot. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Off. Yeah. The Sherwood. She was a herbalist. Like, she healed people with plants. She was a midwife. She delivered children. Of course, they thought she was a witch. Gosh. Yes. Those were her main... And she was also a farmer. So, as we know in, like, history, women who deal with... Growing herbs was weird at yep. this time. It was like, you need to grow food for sustenance, mm-hmm. but she was growing herbs. herbs to heal people. Right. And she was a midwife, so she was like, you know, helping deliver babies, and this kind of bites her in the foot later. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. We already see the setup for how she could be a witch. She's an educated woman yep. who, who dabbles with medicine mm. and delivers babies. Send her to the church! Basically. She knows too much! Basically. Get rid of her! Basically. Throw stones and when no, she had a water death. Drown her! If she drowns, then she's human. If she <laughs> doesn't drown, then she's a witch and we must kill her again. <laughs> um, so she got married to uh, John Shearwood. And her father gave them 50 acres. I said he owned a lot of land. Mm. Gave it to them. And they built a house and they built a farm and she lived with her husband. It's her dowry. They had three sons together, her and her husband. Oh, I want that. So during her life, She was accused of a lot of different things. Her first issue with society was she wore trousers when she worked on the farm instead of a dress. And most poor farm women wore a dress even when working on the farm. She chose to wear trousers. It was also supposedly she was very beautiful and it made women jealous because she was a woman with property, she was beautiful, and she went against the curve. She was like a... Oh, I see. She was like a feminist and like right. did her own thing. I thought they were jealous because they were like, oh, trousers. Maybe that too. Then wear them. God. Yeah. Hate the rules of society. Yeah. So she made a lot of women jealous and... Even sexier. She is just yeah. gorgeous. And at the time, only five women in Virginia owned property, and she was one of those five women. Oh, wow! Yeah. 
Yeah. That is interesting. Yeah. She was, so, yeah, she's a threat. She's, she's a powerhouse. She's a huge threat to people. Oh. And they did not, and especially the poor working class. Because mm. she was born into the middle class, but her husband was pretty poor. Mm. So she lived more in the working class uh, m- later in her life. Her first accusation mm. was by Richard Happy in 1687. Dick Cappy. Dick. Yeah. <laughs> Dick. Dick is right. Because he's the first accuser. First accuser. So fitting. Go on. So he accuses her of putting a spell on his bull and his bull ended up dying. Yeah. They go to court unlike in Salem uh, which was a Puritan society. Mm. Virginia was more like people were more aware of hoodoo culture, which is black and indigenous, African and indigenous yeah. religious uh, culture mixing with Christianity. Yeah, instead of the voodoo. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's less, um, it's less Puritan. It's less like Quaker. It's like mm. people who are in the church do not also run the court system. They're a little bit more separated here in Virginia at this time. So because of that, when they go to court, the people are like, we don't have time for a witchcraft trial. Like, this is, like, bullshit. There's no evidence. And then she countersues for slander, and they're like, no. Because she's a threat, so they're like, we're not going to take your countersuit for slander, and everything's dissolved. Second case is in 1698, and this is with John Gisby, Gisbury, in he claims she put a spell on his hogs and they died and then his cotton field, which also failed. Yes. These are a lot of jealous farmers because she was a witch, so she could make her crops good. She knew how to tend the land. Yeah. She knew how to tend the animals. She yeah. knew how to tend people. Those men were just pissed and they saw that their stuff was dying and they were like, she Cursed me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, they're looking at her and they're like, well, God blessed her. Yeah. And she's a woman and she's pretty and I have a small dick and so therefore I'm pissed and she needs to go underwater now. I mean, most witches were wronged, you know? Absolutely. Almost all of them. Although I do believe in some witchcraft and that makes life kind of spicy and exciting. But even if they did practice any type of witchcraft, I don't believe that they deserved any, any repercussions yeah, at all. Definitely. They would have saved the world. They were already using all the herbs. They were already healing. They already knew maybe even how the psyche worked. They could have elevated us, but we still have them around. My oh, yeah. mom. <laughs> oh. My mom. Your mom? She uses all natural substances. All natural. I mean, she's just sent me a whole face care routine that was all organic, all natural. Cute. And she will make all these concoctions. It is so interesting. So my dad started calling her a witch because her hair got long. And, you know, she's starting to get older. So yeah. it's like salt and pepper. And um, she, she'll say like, yes, I am. <laughs> Sure thing. She just knows how to use these herbs to heal, and girl. And her skin looks amazing still at almost 60. Love, so, love. And we're white. You know, we can't hide the yeah. wrinkles at all. Yeah. So. Yeah. There love. we go. Love. Her third accusation is in 1698 by Elizabeth Barnes. This accusation was that Grace turned into a cat, apparently went in this woman's house and whipped her in the As a cat? As a cat. She yeah, she as a cat whipped this woman, supposedly. Like with a with a whip, like with an actual long piece of leather or a switch or something? The recorded history does not say what she used to whip her. As a cat. But as a cat, yes. She supposedly Grace Sherwood supposedly So whipped. the cat suddenly had like a grasp on Yes. Whatever. We'll say a piece of maybe leather or a piece of something from the barn yes. and it whipped her. Yes. Repeatedly. Yes. And I guess it hurt. Yes. From the from a cat. Correct. Okay. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds okay. So 
I'm glad she said it like that because when they brought this to court, you know what happened? They said what? They said, the hell? What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was obviously slander dissolved. So she count <laughs> she countered sues El- Elizabeth for slander, and yeah. the court was like, "No, we don't want to hear it." This is her third accusation, and at this point. Grace is having a rough time because she's been paying all these court fees. What about her husband? Well, he's helping, but they only have 50 acres of land and she's married downward class wise. Mm. Oh, so, I see. And she's not, because they don't want to hear her slander lawsuit, she's not getting any reimbursement for going to court all these times. <sighs> so she's going to court and she's losing money. By getting sued a lot, and they're not letting her counter sue for slander yeah. because they don't like they just they're like, well, you you're a threat to us, and you're a woman, so like whatever. I'm surprised they even had counter sue back in the 1600s. Well, I don't think that's what they. Well, I don't know if that's what they called it, but essentially she was suing back for slander. I'm well, still surprised yeah. that they even let a woman people do that. do that. Yeah, yeah, which I guess is good that she was given the opportunity, but it doesn't matter because yeah. they didn't take her seriously. Yeah, that's, well, sure. Yeah. <laughs> So anyways, all of this happens, and then the final straw is on January 3rd, 1706. This is a couple years later. A woman named Elizabeth Hill accuses Grace of hexing her and being the reason she has a miscarriage. (gasps) No! Yes. Yes. Oh, that's awful! Yes. And (gasps) obviously we can see kind of how this manifested it's because this woman was a midwife mm. so people are assuming she has a lot of knowledge in regard and stuff like that yeah oh, oh my gosh yeah. it's awful yeah screw elizabeth yeah meet me outside uh, by the dumpsters basically ah and on top of all before the- elizabeth sorry she lost her baby. but still yeah i mean yeah. she's going through some but still yeah yeah, yeah. On top of all of this, the woman on the third, uh, the third lawsuit, Miss Barnes, she is the head juror <gasps> on this jury. No. Yeah. So the the word they used in the history was she was the foreman of the jury. It was an all female jury because apparently women can only do witchcraft, so you have to be convicted by other women. Oh, so that's it, interesting. So it was an all female jury, and the main juror was. The person who sued her in 1698, Miss Barnes, for being a witch. So they didn't like stop it being like, this is a conflict of interest. They like let that happen. <gasps> and so our girl Grace goes to court. They strip her naked. They've done this for the past three trials too, but they strip her naked and they all the women inspect her body for witches' marks. Yes. Which could be I've like, read about that, yeah, actually. yeah. Which could be like a blemish or a birthmark or something some, resembling, yeah, some, just something out of the yeah. ordinary, actually. If you have something weird on your skin, then that's the sign of a witch. Would you have been a witch? Did you have something weird on your skin when you were born? <sighs> I don't think so. I had a mole, and it was really big, but I don't really? think that they would say that that's. It's not in like a weird shape. It's like a both holes. You know? Did it go away? I had to. I had it. Removed. It was removed. It was getting bigger. They oh. thought it was cancerous. That's why I have oh. a little scar on scar. my back, and it's a little caterpillar looking. Oh. Mm-hmm. I don't think. Well, I mean, I'm a pretty freckly and moly person, but when I was born, I don't think I had any major. Yeah. Marks That's a major mark, but I, I'm curious as to think is what was a certain mark that they would convict someone and be like, "That's a witchcraft mark." Yeah. You know what? It, I mean, if it was a cross, isn't that the son of our Lord and Savior, Jesus? <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. Like, so how, do you, how can you tell the difference if it's like a mark on your skin? Well, that's the thing. It's up to like a jury of your peers who, oh, all, who all hate you. This is so unfair. Because you have money. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, she didn't even have that much money at this point. Right, but she was doing better off, obviously, than the people. yeah than the men that was losing all their crops and animals and blamed it on her. Yeah, and then just, that girl lost her baby. Everybody, everybody loses something; they're blaming it on freaking Grace. You know? Yeah. So I lost my shoe, and I think Grace swallowed it. Basically, all of that happens. I, the women search her body, and they cannot verify that she's a witch. 
So she volunteered and was like, let me be dunked, which is when they take you to a river or a body of water. What I said earlier was yes, right? Yes. <gasps> so they, okay, I saw that in a movie. So they like try to, so if you drown, then you're human. But if yes. you don't drown, you're, uh, you're a suspected witch. of a witchcraft and yeah. therefore they kill you anyways yes. because you're a witch. <gasps> oh my gosh, I'm so happy I was right. Yes. Okay. There is speculation there were like three different times they dunked her. Only record is that they tied a Bible around her neck. And they, Perverts. And they, they, I think they tie your like big toe to like your thumb or something. Across, like your right big toe to your left thumb. Oh my god. <laughs> Trying to do it right now. It's like. It's weird. It's, it's so, so weird. And then they put you in a bag. Mm. And then they take the bag. Your whole body or just your face? I think the whole body. And they take you to the water, and then they drop you in. And as you said, you sink your innocence, and you drown, but you get to be buried on religious property. Yeah. yeah. And if you're not, if you float and save yourself, only witches float. Because the idea was water is pure, witches are bad. If you float, it's because the water can't mix with your lack of purity, so you have to float. Oh, really? Yes. Yes. Oh, I thought it was just, like, simple, like, magical powers. Well, a little bit, but mostly it's, like... I mean, it is, like, magical powers, but it's also, like, they see water as pure. That's oh, that's yeah. so interesting. I never heard something like that. Yeah, well, I think this relates to, like, baptism. Oh, I and see. And you're, like, yeah. washed in the body. Yes, oh my gosh. All connected. Yeah. Just like the roses. Yeah. <laughs> so, miraculously, she gets out of the bag, gets out of her restraints, and swims to the surface, and makes it out alive. Oh, that's so hot of her. They were like, okay, well, she survived. Which... She has to be a witch. Witch. She gets put in jail for seven years after that. <gasps> no! They find her guilty. Her husband died, like, before this trial. Oh, f- five years before this trial. So she was, it was also... Oh, she was a widow. She was a widow. So okay. It was, it was also bizarre because she hadn't remarried, which is weird for women at the time. And her father had died. So okay, all of her father's land, the acre, tons of acres I told you about, she also had at this time. She was just she a was, big old... Yeah. Right. So she's finally released in uh, 1714. And the reason they believe she was released in this year is she paid back all the taxes on her property she had not paid. So she owed taxes while she was in jail. And the government had, <laughs> had seized her property. And then when she government got... The government hasn't changed much, I guess. No. no. <laughs> And when she got out of jail, she paid back her taxes immediately and, like, um, got her property back mm. and was, like, back on top. And it, the story goes from there. She, like, really never left her property and she stayed to herself. And she died in 1740 on her property. How old was she, Gina? Um, she was, she born? was born in 1660, before She was 80 years old. <gasps> okay. At least she lived a longer life. Yeah. I thought they were going to kill her at the that trial well apparently when you're a witch okay so all the tests to see if you're a witch could kill you but if you are a witch all that happens is you go to jail or get banished so that's what i thought was gonna happen to her i'm so i mean it's great that she lived till 80 you know after being accused so many times and you know tried so many times and she still sustained a life till 80 i mean after her husband after all that stuff strong as bitch right there Amen. yeah she was the last person to be convicted of witchcraft in virginia it didn't happen a lot in virginia but yeah That's surprising we're like backwoods and we have a lot of yeah what's the areas well from what i'm reading on this podcast and through our research virginia was not as i mean it was religious we had bible belt communities and stuff mm-hmm. like that but overall it was less religious than other parts of america at the time, or what is going to be America at the mm-hmm. time. It's so interesting, though, because going to a story with witchcraft in my family, it's not so much on my mom's side, it's on my dad's side. His granny had a lot of stories about a witch okay. that lived, you know, they lived in Virginia. And this was back in Lynchburg, 
No, no, no. She lived in, like, more Amherst area. Okay. And that seems like a witchy area. It, it is. Honest. It's, like, really, there's a ton of backwoods. Um, now, you know, obviously everywhere is being uh, converted into, you know, a lot of apartments or whatever. Yeah. But back in the, this was in, gosh, the 30s, I'd say. Oh, okay. 1930s. Okay. Um, When my great-grandmother, my uh, dad's grandmother, was young. She was about, like, seven. And they lived across from what they called was a witch. And it's exactly like Grace Sherwood. She had the herbs. People came to her for loads of different illnesses. Oh, wow. Women who were pregnant even, you know, like, what can I do to ease this? What can I do to ease that? So, you know, kind of like the midwife in a way. My great-grandmother, my dad's granny, told him that there's a story where she was playing with, like, a few of these boys. The witch lived, like, four blocks down a certain road. Okay. They're talking about her and they were like, well, let's go visit her. You know, let's see if she's really a witch, you know? And we, you know, we just think that she's making concoctions. She's not really a witch. Let's go test her, blah, blah. You know, young boys are like yeah, 12 or something. They're trying to fuck with her. Yeah, absolutely. And so she's like, okay, fine, but I'm not going to do anything. You know, she, she knew better because she had heard from probably like her, her parents, my yeah, great grandparents, yeah. like, don't mess don't with this with girl. That lady. Yeah, yeah, like don't. So they <laughs> went down, and my father told me that once they reached her house, she had a house on a small hill, and there were these concrete steps that were there leading up to the house. So you couldn't see anything but like the top of the door when you're down there looking at the house directly. Okay. And so they Wait, come out. So. They're standing at the steps? Yes, okay. at the bottom of the steps over, and it's kind of going up a hill. Okay. So they can't see the front door except for the top. Okay, so and these are steep steps. Yes, then. very wow. steep steps. Okay. And so they're looking up, and they're laughing and making noise, and they're like, you go, no, you go, no, you go knock on her door. So while they're standing outside, one of the kids had brought a broom, and they had heard from their grandparents, great-grandparents, if you put a broom in front of a witch, she is not able to step over it. Someone goes and knocks on her door. I don't know which who it was, because um, my granny, my great grandmother, was uh, with like five different people, yeah. and you know neighborhood kids. Yeah, there was no answer. And then they come down. They're still in front of her house, and they're making a ruckus and laughing and playing. And then the witch supposedly comes out, and she's like, "Who knocked on my door?" Really loud. They can't see her. They can, like, maybe see the top of her head. <laughs> they all got quiet. And they're like, are, are you really a witch? And she said something. I can't remember what my dad said. It was something along the lines of, like, so what if I am, basically? Oh, okay. She's like, you know, or people talk or whatever. Yeah. And then they were like, well, why don't you come down here and we can talk about it? And she was up there. And right away she goes, I'm not coming down there until you move that broom. And she, like, there's no way that she could see, could like, see through broom. a window even. You can't see... Because it's so that, steep. Yeah, it's so steep, you can't see. And it was just a dirt road. It wasn't, yeah. like, a sidewalk. It was a dirt road. And she lived, like, backwards, you know? And, um, not, no neighbors either. Like, she had, like, probably two acres of land. And yeah. They, they walk, not two acres, because they only walk, like, four blocks. She, she had land, you know? Yeah, she could not see that thing. And, uh... She just right away was like, I will so you move that broomstick. And they they ran. They were so scared, you know. They were just frightened after that. That was just like the first proof of... That lady being a witch. Yes. And also, you know, it's just my great-grandmother, my dad's granny, you know, she... They were very Christian, but they didn't... They belong... They thought it was all hoo-ha. They thought it was all baloney. Baloney. That really proved something because there was no way she could have known that. Yeah. She wasn't, you know, there was no even looking out any kind of window. She wasn't outside. She was inside. And, yeah. Do you want to tell our listeners how many E's you rate Grace Sherwood? So, Grace Sherwood, I don't believe there's a lot of haunting that has been done. So therefore, not too much. Not too much. Not so too therefore, much. with the story, it's very interesting. 
I'd probably give it like four E's for the scare factor. Four E's. But six E's for learning new information about powerful women. Yeah. Love that. Absolutely. Six E's for the pod. Mm -hmm. Four E's for Miss Grace Sherwood. Absolutely. Sorry, Miss Grace Sherwood. It's just if you had been scarier, you know, like maybe there's a story about you scratching somebody or um, whispering somebody's ear, then it'd be a little scarier. But there's not much recollection of you, which is sad. You should come and maybe... Maybe haunt the statue. This Maybe. is why your family has that going on. You're just inviting spirits to come. <laughs> I just want all of them to feel seen and heard, even in the afterlife. Well, hopefully the podcast gives her legacy, and that's how she's seen and heard. Yeah. Yeah. But you actually didn't have a bad life, babe. I mean, she really didn't. She lived till 80, and she didn't get... Maine. She didn't get uh, any limbs cut off. She yeah. didn't get burnt. She didn't, you know, they dumped her under water. And I mean, I mean, what woman hadn't been through that at that time? <laughs> she did suffer some injustices, but Who I didn't as a lady. Okay. I don't know. I mean, she had to pay for a lot, but she still had her land. She never lost it, apparently. So yeah, I mean, as far as I mean. Yeah, she didn't have the worst story. And honestly, if she didn't have that land, none of this probably would have happened to her. Mm. So she more paid the consequences. You're right. She but paid- being a strong ass yeah. woman. But um, next time, come with me as- with a story that is decrepit, okay. depraved, okay. just absolutely gory me. and gross. I am challenging you to bring me that good good. To good good. Thank you for coming so much, and tune in next time for E. Thanks for having me. Love you. Bye. Love you long time, baby. Yeah.